In this video, I want to talk about bird watching. But bird watching with this tiny little camera, GoPro. Usually, when people talk about bird watching, they are talking about massive cameras, huge lenses, and lots of fancy photography and filming equipment. We are talking about the tiniest thing that you can use for bird watching. Of course, you're not going to use this toy to get into wildlife and something in the woods or uh, crazy places. I'm talking about your backyard, somewhere that you actually put the camera there and you invite birds to come there and be your guest on your feeder dining table. In that case, probably this is the best camera that you can use to film or take pictures of the birds. Or is it? Let's find out. Let's see what is so special about these cameras. First of all, they are not cheap. They are looking into a few hundred dollars, depending on the model. This is GoPro Hero 7. I have another Hero 5. Now, as I'm talking to you, we have Hero 8 and Hero 9 out. So these things are getting quite expensive, something around 450 US dollars, if you're talking about GoPro Hero 9. But all these guys, they have a few things in common. First, there is nothing to worry about. You just push the button and it starts recording. Everything is in focus and you don't need to adjust that much of light colors and all those things. Although if you really want to go through the details, you can fine tune the things. But I would say 90% of GoPro users, they don't even care. They just put the camera, push the button and start recording. It can record in high frame rates. So if you want to have slow motion, that's great. And this is a chickadee landing on the bird feeder in slow motion. Beautiful. And they are waterproof. So you can leave it outside, let it record, and you don't care if it is raining, if it is shining, or anything else. But with all these things, there are a few things that these guys, they are not so good at. First thing is low light. At the moment, there is a Canon DSLR in front of me filming this video. Let me just switch it with this camera and see the difference. How's that? Well, this is exactly how I look in GoPro. Exactly the same place, exactly the same lighting condition. Yes, I know. Could be better, but that's what the action camera looks like. All right, but the good news is that you're not going to do the bird watching inside the house in the low light condition. So most of the time, you are working with these things outside. You put the bird seeds there, somewhere outside, either in the feeder or on the ground, depending on the type of bird that you're targeting. You have the GoPro with the cage, you put the cage inside and just close it. Maybe you want to mount it on a tiny tripod like this. Open it, put it in front of the feeder. Maybe you want to adjust the angle, push the button and it starts recording. And it records for something around an hour and a half or something around that. And you really don't need to worry about it. You just bring in the footage, scan through it. Whichever that is good enough, you just keep it. The others, you just delete it. No worries. Couldn't be easier than that. Now, probably in addition of the GoPro, you also need uh, maybe a small tripod if you want to put it on the ground. Or you may want to have one of these depending on where you want to mount it. So let me just take this off and if you have one of these you can just mount a camera on the top of it show you and that's it and then you can mount it wherever you want 
something like this setup. As you can see, sky is the limit. So technically, you can mount this camera with these clamps, whatever you want. And now, here's the footage from the camera on the left side. Just pay attention to the sound. And here is a sample footage from the camera on the right. Of course, these mounts are different. This one is good for my setup. If you have a pole that you want to mount a camera to the pole and the feeder is hanging around that, you can use something like this. That This clamp is better designed for something like a round pole. Regardless, you can find all these mounts on Amazon, and they are fairly cheap. We have seen that the footage that come out of this camera is quite good. It's very pleasing to eyes. But why are these guys so expensive? The reality is that these cameras are designed for action. So they can film in high frame rates. This one can film even up to 240 frames per second in full HD. So yeah, if you want to get a slow motion, fantastic, go for it. But the reality is that maybe for, for bird watching, you really don't need anything more than 60 frames per second. I have some 60 frames per second footage. Let's see that how it works if I just slow it down a little bit. This footage is filmed with GoPro Hero 5. This is a female cardinal coming to enjoy a brunch on my ground feeder, hoping for a Prince Charming to come around and probably accompany her. But all of a sudden, something else happens. Yep, looks more like Angry Bird or Clint Eastwood coming say, get off my lawn. Let's see it in slow motion now. This one is slowed down to 24 frames per second. But we're going to still go slower. Look at that. Yes, it is not buttery smooth, but still you can see lots of details in this guy. And yeah, who does it remind you? Of course. I was under the impression that this guy is going to change his mind, go down to the girl and apologize. But no, he's hungry, so he doesn't care about the girls. And it's funny because he doesn't even care about the other birds. You see that dark-eyed Junko in the background? No, he doesn't even react to them. Now he gets off the dining table to claim a little bit of more seeds down there. And this is the time that the female gets the opportunity and gets on the dining table. And you think this guy's going to go there and apologize? No way. Trust me, this guy's going to be in trouble next spring when he's looking for a girlfriend. But if you really want to take it to slow motion, or if you really want to film whatever you see in your backyard in 4K, probably that's going to take a lot of space on this camera. So you really don't want to put it there and let it record for hours and then digging into the massive footages that it produces. If that's the case, probably you need another accessory for this camera. And that one is just a remote. This is not the original GoPro remote, but the aftermarket ones are much cheaper, almost half price of the actual GoPro remote, and they work as good. The thing is that you can put the GoPro outside, you can even turn it off, and you can get the remote, just push the button, and it starts the camera and it starts filming. In that case, even if you want to film high resolution or with high frame rates that takes lots of space on your SD card, you can put it there. And while you're sitting there watching a movie or working or even reading a magazine, book or whatever, as soon as you see the birds are coming, you can just push the button, start the camera and just capture the moments that birds are there, not like 
filming an hour, two hours, or three hours, and then start scanning and finding the birds in huge files. So this one, if you're looking for 4K or higher frame rate, probably that's one of the elements that you want to buy. One more thing that these guys have, which probably you don't really need it, is they are designed to stabilize the footage. They have massive processors inside it. So if you mount them on a motorcycle, or even if you just hold it and walk or jog, uh, these cameras can stabilize the footage. And that takes a lot of processing power. Most of the money that you spend on these cameras are actually spent on the capabilities of stabilization, which as bird watchers, do we really need to stabilize it? No, we really just mount it on the tripod or on these mounts and attach it to the pole and you're good to go. So the reality is that probably we don't need to stabilize it. I always turn the stabilization off because it gives me a little bit wider, wider frame and even cleaner shot. So is there a camera that can get it cheaper? I mean, much cheaper, a few hundred dollars. And it can give us reasonable image quality. Keep in mind that none of these action cameras perform well in low light. So there must be something. The answer is yes. Here is another action camera. I got it a long time ago. Of course, it's not that wide angle and it's much cheaper at that time. I guess I got it for something around uh, $60, $70. And now I really don't know why people really like it. Now it retails something around $100 Canadian, probably $75, $80 US. You can get it on Amazon. This one, although it has a stabilizer, it doesn't really stabilize that well. But take a look at the footage from this camera from the same angle. This is the footage of the cam park, just a cheap knockoff action camera that you can get it anywhere. I haven't done any post processing on this image. So whatever that you see is just out of the camera. Audio, the video, colors, Everything is right out of the camera. As far as I see, image is sharp, colors are real, white balance looks good, and overall is very presentable. This could be my favorite action camera, even for my regular outdoor activities. The only reason that I usually don't take it for fishing is that the angle is not that wide. So most of the time when I mount it on my hat, I miss the fish and it doesn't get into the frame. So I needed a wider angle and that's why I mainly use this camera for bird watching or less adventurous things. Keep it in mind, this camera at that price or anything like that, you can find many of them on Amazon, comes with the remote. It's not waterproof. So basically, if it's raining, probably you want to put it in the waterproof case or you may want to put it outside and put something on the top of it to protect it from the rain. But the reality is that I really cannot tell the difference between these two footages. This one in Canada as of today retails for $350 and that's Black Friday price. And this one probably around uh, 90 something dollars Canadian again. So almost three and a half times more expensive than this. And the footage when it comes to bird watching really doesn't make a difference. Keep it in mind for this one, I have to spend extra money to get the remote if I want to use the remote. While these cheap cameras always come with a remote, which is just paired with the camera, you just push the button and it starts filming. So Probably if you want to have an action camera and if you want to only use it for bird watching and you want to keep it close to your feeder in the backyard, probably any one of these cheap action cameras without stabilizer does the job. Otherwise, 
if you want to use it also for cycling, for other activities, for hiking, I don't know. You decide. Probably you are better off with a GoPro that has the image stabilizer and can do the job in a better way. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. I'll see you in the next video. And before I end this video, I want to invite you to enjoy a little bit more of my backyard footages. Enjoy.